Hello everybody, welcome back once again to the premiere series of NASCAR Stock Car Racing Competition. It's once again the NASCAR Verner's Cup Series. Getting very late in the year, only a few races left. Last time out was that crazy, 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 crazy race. Of course, that was, of course, Martinsville. That was the Spam 500. And who on earth won that race that day? I don't actually know. I don't remember. I know that's, that's really professional on my part. I'm trying to think. Was it like Getty Lee? No, I bet you. It was Denzel Washington, wasn't it? I bet you it was Denzel Washington. I don't know for sure. What I do know. is one irrefutable fact that this is a different track. As you can see, this track is not used to having stock cars. As you can probably tell by the the IMSA scoring tile or pylon thingy, McBobber, Jigger, McDoohickey, McGeegaw, Gadget, Gizmo thing there. This is the Sebring International Raceway. Yes, we're at Sebring this week. It'll be a pretty good race. It's the Florida... It's the Florida Lottery Grand Prix of Sebring. Yes, we're using Grand Prix. So, before we get... Farther, let's go over our starting lineup. Speaking of Grand Prix, there's one on the front row. The, the, the number 20 Pontiac Grand Prix of Morgan Freeman. He's having a pretty good year in points. He's starting alongside a part-time driver who's on pole. It's, it's none other than Tim Foster. Tim Foster has grabbed the pole. What a big day for that small team. And it could be even bigger. Jeff Lynn and Joe Biden are in the second row. Then George Lazenby. He'll start next to Snoop Dogg there in row three. Tony Stark alongside Tom Hanks in row four. And Mark Webber coming back stateside will be alongside Burt Reynolds in row five. Then there's Walter White and last year's champion Richard Simmons in row six, row seven, cast for the friendly ghost. And Carl Edwards finally back in a cup race, not having to worry about de teammates DNQing. Alfred Hitchcock qualifies along with Telly Savalas. There's Harrison Ford trying to take back the points lead from Bob Ross. He'll start next to Billy Mays in row nine. And row ten is where Donald Fagan will start. He's alongside Brendan Gaughan. And Al Capone will start on the inside of row 11. Relatively speaking, he's alongside Rick Mass. And Dave Marcus will start in row 10, 12 alongside. Drivers, start your engine. Starting alongside Denzel Washington, who I believe to have won last week. Row 13 is where Woody Woodpecker and Hank Hill reside. And Kathy Bates... And John Cena in row 14. Mark Martin will start next to Crow T. Robot. Then Getty Lee and Pastor Maldonado. Pastor once again stateside. Iggy Koopa starting next to Marty McFly. Ann Wilson next to Sir Topham Hat. David Land next to Al Roker. Taryn Edgerton. Eggsy makes his first career start. Promoting good friend Elton John's farewell album as he starts next to Bob Ross somebody died I think as Marco Polo will start on the last row alongside Peter Perfect I want the 
Camera angles are a little wonky here, let's just say. And when's the last time a car number just zero was in a cup race? I have no clue. But the number zero dodge for Cameron Edgerton is going to be racing this week. So this is set to be an exciting race. Well, decently exciting. 17 laps around the Sebring circuit. Here in Florida. Surprisingly, very surprisingly, no worries about... About hurricane or anything. That's very interesting. As you can see right around here, this is the Gen Band Ben, I believe. Or no, maybe that's not yet. No, that should be Gen Band. Space car takes us through Le Mans turn. And down the Olman Strait. Forty two of the of the nation's Drivers. I won't necessarily say the top drivers because I don't know if they are the top drivers. They undulate over the circuit here. That was really straight. Wasn't it? Was this one of the runways? There's an on airport right in the next subway colors are gonna last row. That stinks. Oh, and that's the Mopar scheme. Anyway, Tip Foster will lead us down. He's got the third line for the final corner, Sunset Bend. But will he have the good corner going in? Will he have the preferred line in the turn one? I don't know. All we know is the Florida Lottery Sebring Grand Prix is underway. Two by two. Tib Foster seemingly having the edge. But oh, here comes Morgan Freeman charging to the inside. Foster trying to get a big run going into turn two. He's not going to quite get it. They go through that little kink there. And now Tip Foster. He's gotten through the, the uh, trouble section as they go through Gurney Bend. Now he's got the advantage. And he clears Morgan Freeman heading down to the hairpin turn. Now this breaking zone. Ooh, George Lazenby making some good news. Now they're through the uh, Fangio chicane right here. Foster taking a big leap as they head towards Cunningham Corner. The name of the corners here as they go through uh, Collier Curve. Excuse me. That slight right, that's a slight right to this hard right, tower turn as they name it, then down the flying fortress straight. As now they head towards Bishop Bend here, and heading towards Gendabian Bend. As you can see, Snoop Dogg has taken the fifth the fourth spot away from Jeff Lynn. Interesting battling going on towards the back. And there's Denzel Washington. Darren Edgerton has dropped the last. But Tim Foster is your early leader here at Sebring. Morgan Freeman 
He's running in second. Let's talk about Morgan Freeman for a second. He was seen going in this year as the clear-cut number one at uh, Virgil Tibbs. Now it's only really a disputed number one as Snoop Dogg has had a pretty good season. He's still lower in the in the points and has less wins. But he did get that big win earlier this year. Joe Biden, he's looking for his fifth win of the season. But he has to get around the Morgan Freeman and Tib Foster to do so. And keep the other 39 drivers that are already behind them. They have to stay there. Snoop Dogg. As Jeff Lynn is going to be running in the fifth spot. Lynn had kind of a disappointing start to the year. Just He was fast, but not that fast. But he's been solid. He's 15th in points. Although he lost three point spots last week. But he did get that win at Watkins Glen. So things are looking up. George Lazenby. It's rumored that this guy is not who he says he is. He claims to be an actor from Australia, but... We have our doubts. We have our doubts about him. What we do know is he was... Considering retirement before that big, big, big win at Pikes Peak. Tony Stark. Now, here's a driver who will not be running full time next year. Well documented struggles down in the order will be cutting down his schedule and only running part time. He's actually only 38th in points. So he wouldn't, he wouldn't even be locked in for the first five races of next year. As we are switching to a top 35 in points based system. So you see Tony Stark. Discover card came on board. One of the drivers who is poised to have a potentially breakout year points wise. But has not won a single race. But out front, it's Tib Foster, the Mississippi native, currently running Hoosier tires on his number 04 DeWalt Dodge, but it's rumored he's, he's you know, believed he's going to be switching to number 40 and allying with, as we know he's allying with Lionel Messi Racing next year to run part-time in, in the Verner's Cup Series. What's also believed is Foster and Lionel Messi himself are working out a deal where he would run full-time for the team in the Melling series, also driving uh, the same number, so number 40. It would be a great way for him to get a full season worth in a series under the belt as a potential prime for a full-time Rookie of the Year slash championship bid in the 2021 season should he go that route he's got to hold off Morgan Freeman who has he I don't think no Morgan Freeman has never run one on a road course before Freeman more of a big bigger track aficionado Winning twice on two-mile ovals, and he won once at Daytona last year. Those being where his wins have come. Oh, Morgan Freeman's only won once this year. I mean, theoretically, Sebring is a big track, so it would be in his wheelhouse. Tom Hanks is eighth. He's third in points. And here's the kicker. He missed the Dr. Pepper 600, which, believe it or not, was just a week after he had won that race in Richmond. 
the Aflac 400, I believe. There's Mark Weber. Mark Weber, he might have raced here at Sebring before. Certainly not in the stock car, though. Weber priming this this car up. It's Red Bull will return to the series full time with Toyota and driver Casper the Friendly Ghost who will be moving over the organization. Finally, Burt Reynolds running 10th. That's not too much of a surprise. He did get his first crew win earlier this year. And it was on a uh, road course. It was actually Sonoma. Right behind is another driver who's done well on road courses in the pack past former Sonoma winner himself Carl Edwards Edwards running the 50 he'll be moving to the Logan Cloud Motorsports number 94 subway will be coming on board and I thought people were slowing up champion Richard Simmons in 12th he seems to get a one win out last early on in the year and then proceed to not win the rest of the year. He did that this year coming at the end of the t the uh, West Coast swing when he won at Texas World. And the year before that, there was no West Coast swing, but he still won out West early on when he pulled off a win in Las Vegas. That was the last cup race that has been run at Las Vegas. There's Casper the Friendly Ghost. We were talking about him earlier. He's still looking for that elusive first win. And this is a 70th start. Walter White. Has two wins to his name. As once again, S Snoop trying to get around Joe Biden. There's Alfred Hitchcock, who would be a championship contender if it's not for the four races he's missed. He's been having a, a better average finish than pretty much the rest of the full-time drivers. So it's a shame. This top 35 locked-in rule could have really helped him out this year. Telly Savalas, he's still looking for his first win after a three-win campaign last year. Billy Mays. He's done all right. I don't know if he's won this season or not. I can't remember. Who has won, though, is Harrison Ford. And he is... Ooh, would he even be your points leader as they run? I don't know where Bob Ross is on track. That is a good question. And where are they in points? Oh, only separated by 10 points. So this right, just four spots ahead. And he's well beyond that Bob Ross having a terrible day Donald Fagan running in the 19th spot he's he's been having a decent year not quite as many wins as last year he's only got two compared to three and he definitely fell off points-wise, but he's been slowly gaining back up. He's up, up to 18, so it's respectable. Meanwhile, Brenton gone. Finally broke the ice and won at Pocono earlier this year. That was a much-anticipated win. Uh, points-wise, he's kind of been struggling. I'm being possibly... Down on the totem pole at Richard Simmons might the Richard Simmons uh pipeline might do that to you, which is why he is switching this is dodge and joint merging with Logan Cloud Motorsports. There's Al Capone. You know, there's let's look at some of the drivers you don't normally see. Rick Mast in this race in the ninety eight car. He nearly took this car, well not this this car, but he nearly took the 98 to victory lane. Earlier this, this year, Indianapolis was leading at towards the end of the race and pit stops in the very late stages, and he took on two tires. But a few-only stop by Tom Jones would wind, wind up giving the win to the number five. Dave Marcus, respectable. He's in 25th. And this Team Realtree 
Chevrolet. Huh. I have no, no clue what's on the back bumper. We go on board with Getty Lee for some reason. Probably just to try and figure out whatever that says. Oh, welcome Nextel. That's right. I don't know what it says on the, the right one, but that's right. They all ran that. Mark Martin. There's Mark Martin. Pastor Maldonado. Oh, this guy was a crash magnet in Formula One. A complete crash magnet. And yet, I don't... Has he even been in a wreck at all in his cup starts this year? I don't think he has. He's finished down on the order. I would... Well, in his cup start, which was at Watkins Glen, I believe. Yes, that's right. Ricardo is the really kind of a bummer that Maldonado wouldn't be doing better today. He's not, I guess he's just not adapting terribly well to these stock cars. He did finish 32nd in his last start, which was at his previous start, which was at Watkins Glen. There's Taron Edgerson, first career start. He's running in 38th. Bob oh! Hold up! David Lancer, top of Matt Marco Polo are out. All right. Well, we're. I have got a good idea of what happened here. Let us take a look. So we're going to wind back to the third lap of this event. And I have a feeling it's going to go into the hairpin. So as you can see, they big stack up. And they just very big stack up. Oh, Bob Ross spins out. No yellow. And you can see badly dented hoods. Tim Foster has led every lap thus far. But it's not been easy as Morgan Freeman has been hounding him this entire race. I want Foster, I believe, was the only driver to attempt on on these Hoosier tires. And you're probably no. Yeah, attempts. There are D and Q's. To be exact, in order of uh, fastest to slowest, those D and not qualifying were Ferris Bueller, Zachary Fitzwater Sr. Oh, he was also on Hoosiers. Ian Anderson, Tom Jones, Bela Fleck. Jones and Fleck had made every single race of the year thus far. Michael Andretti. Woody Harrelson, S Stephen Hawking, and Stephen George. So only two of the hat trick cars even made it in the race. And yet we got all six of the Rush Fender cars actually made it for once. Well, that's crazy. <sighs> oh? Oh? Snoop Dogg trying to hold off a charge from Jeff Lynn. Who's gotten about a half of a hat a half a car length. We're closing in on halfway. Oh, and Tim Foster's pitting right before halfway. Anybody chancing it and staying out? No, they are all coming in. Literally everybody comes down pit road. 
Well, maybe not Bob Ross. Or Marty McFly. Or Hank Hill. Hank Hill had the pit. Oh, he already pitted. As we go out to the front of the pack, you see the the good pit stop for Tib Foster. George Lazenby going to lose several spots in pit road. Oh, it's a tight battle as they come flying out. There's Rick Mast. Oh! Be interesting. They were 23rd. I'm pretty sure Marty McFly has gained spots. The undercut would seem to have worked pretty well. Oh, this is huge! Bob Ross actually leapfrogged Harrison Ford. Oh, and he rear ends him! Harrison Ford rear ends Bob Ross! Oh my goodness! Oh, and that's gonna. Oh, goodness! What's this going to do? What is the 97 going to do? Are they going to keep it out on the track? Are they going to come in and fix the damage? Oh, major championship implications. Bob Ross doesn't look too much worse for wear. Darren Edgerton just bombing around at the back of the pack. Just trying to get exposure for the farewell yellow brick, brick road tour. Wilson we'll Marco Polo in the back. Now this might be it probably will be a one stop race, but they did all pit before halfway. Could this be a two-stop fuel mileage race? I know who does not want to see that as your leader, Tim Foster. Anyway, who said that? Hank Hill did grab a few spots. And Harrison Ford, no, he just lost a couple of spots. He didn't actually pit. What happened to Marty McFly? Marty McFly back down. Did he have problems? In the problem corner. Yeah, he rear-ended Hank Hill! So he is racing for 39th with Marco Polo. And Wilson is just off pace. Aaron Edgerton is just a back, backer packer. And right now, as they'd run, Bob Ross would come out of here with a 19-point advantage. Not what Harrison Ford was hoping for, but could be worse. It could be a lot worse. As we zoom back up to the front of the pack, we see a we see big gaps have started to form. Like the one between tenth and ninth. Of over two seconds. The one between sixth and seventh now measures over two seconds as well. Tenth and ninth is actually close to under two seconds. 
Meanwhile, Tib Foster still sits in the lead. Has to hang on for seven laps. And what would go down as a pretty big upset even in the Burners era of drivers coming out of the woodwork. He would win in only his sixth start. That's the quickest turnaround in a while, at least since Ian Anderson won his first start. And anybody who won the first six in the first six races of last year. Hopefully he won't turn out like the last driver who won in his sixth start, Al Roker, who has proceeded so far in his next his next sixty-three start. He's proceeded to strike out. Sounds good in a little bit. Tim Foster, your leader now. Morgan Freeman now being hounded by Joe Biden. Biden looked out to make the pass. Pump faked, actually. If that's even a racing turn. No, Biden ran wide. Wow. And Freeman's going to use that advantage to try and power back. Just think, one second. It's crazy to think after all this, one second is the difference. That's crazy. That. What is also crazy is the fact that we see Bob... We don't see... We do not see Harrison Ford at all. There is Harrison Ford. He's dropped. He has pitted. He's now running 40th. Oh, that's a loss of 42 points. That is huge. And Harrison Ford might have just thrown this championship into the toilet. The only thing saving him is Bob Ross not having the greatest of days either. But there is the man of the second, Tib Foster. The man of the minute, the man of the hour, even. Morgan Freeman tries to hold off Joe Biden for second. Jeff Lynn, Snoop Dogg running fourth and fifth. Lynn looks like he will follow up his performance last time out on the road course with another top five. Tib, don't, don't you pick. Carl Edwards going for 8th position. Proven why he should be back. No, a stock kind car full time. Oh, that was neck and neck at the line. They give it to Carl by about a 10. 5. No, about a hundredth is what I meant. But it was 5 one thousandths. It was 1 two hundredth. And even then, he might not even keep the position as Burt Reynolds has advantage through the gurney curve go our leaders this is gurney right yes gurney Ben. into the hairpin turn which has caused so much trouble and then those mini kinks Don Fangio chicane well that's got to be named after the legendary Mon Juan Manuel Fangio
Again. Oh, okay. Almost looked like Morgan Freeman ran slightly wide through Cunningham. Not wide enough. You can see. Truly, if Getty Lee wanted to rely on team orders, what he'd probably do is order the third, the 16 to slow down and let his teammate the 97 pass. But we know we know how well Rush Fender Racing drivers like to listen to team orders. We know Mark Martin famously likes to ignore them. And all of the full-time drivers, I think Getty leads the highest. Yeah, in 29. What a terrible day. An embarrassing day for Rush Fender Racing. The only thing that would have been more insulting is if Carl Edwards failed to qualify. Was that a stop sign, man? No, it wasn't. I was just crazy. Four laps to go for Tim Foster as he heads through turn two. We go through some interesting camera angles to take you through a different look of the lap. There's a little bit more interesting going on towards here, towards the back. A lot of the flyby style shots. Fastest lap of the race has, believe it or not, been run by Al Capone. And Morgan Freeman's had a lap two, two tenths faster. So they go through Fangio in the Cunningham coming up here. That's the hard right. Oh, 43 and a three, two legendary car numbers running, running right by each other. Oh, we got to move. <laughs> Excuse me for that. Sometimes the, oh, I thought, I thought Hitchcock was going to dump him from that angle. Coming up on three laps to go. It's a nail biter here in South Florida. Under the bridge he goes. I'd probably sing the freaking Red Hot Chili Pepper song, but I don't think I actually know it. Unless that, no, unless that says some people feel like song and if it was I just ruined any chance of a uh, being funny <laughs> I'll just keep that one in mind next time we go to a track that has a bridge so Sonoma maybe if Sonoma oh I think it has that bridge around turn one turn one Anyway, where's Morgan Freeman? Jeff Lynn has actually caught these guys. I would say by, by his speed, if he can actually make passes, if he can make the passes, then he can probably complete them. So Tim Foster is not out of the woods just yet. I think the biggest problem is a lot of people just haven't had the they haven't had the really the speed yes that's a great camera angle you can just peer into the eyes of Tim Foster yes great camera work I 
I think it's actually just the same camera angle. I don't know why it would be like that. <laughs> anyway. I don't think these two spots would be great passing zones. I think going into the hairpin would be good. This track probably won't be on the schedule next year, to be honest. This was always kind of seen as a one-off event. Perhaps going forward in the future. The, uh, the 2019 rules package was not designed with road course racing in mind. 2020 could definitely take this into account, though. As whoa, Jeff Lynn one run, runs very wide. That's a surprise, and a very interesting development. We have drivers coming down. Such as Hank Hill and stuff. Marty McFly, Marco Polo. Do they have the fuel? Oh, gut check time for Tib Foster. I would say if you are going to pit, no tires is the way to go. With only a single lap left, you do not want to waste track. You don't want to throw away any track position. But there's probably somebody, toward, especially towards the back, who's probably been saving fuel. This is going to be very critical. And bypassing pit lane goes a lot of these drivers. That's big. Mark Weber, though, he's coming to pit lane. Mark Weber is out of fuel. It did turn in the fuel mileage. Minor amount, but enough. Bob Ross! Bob Ross is out of fuel! Bob Ross is coming down at the white flag! Oh, this could have just... This just probably saved Harrison Ford from losing a terrible amount. Wow! Harrison Ford currently listed in the 38th position. Probably closer to 30 something. 6, 30, probably 37. Oh, that's big. There's the white flag. Ann Wilson brings it down. That's going to mix up the run in order. Oh, Mark Martin! Mark Martin should be able to get... No, he's not going to. Well, that's going to cut down the gap that that got Bob Ross is going to gain. It's only going to be a 16-point lead, it looks like, at this point. That's big. And Wilson will be the last car running. But the big story of the day. Tib Foster going to lead every single lap, it looks like. One corner to go. Coming around. A Herculean upset. Provided he, yes, he stays out. And Tib Foster wins the Florida Lottery Sebring Grand Prix. A huge upset. And everybody on the 04 pit crew scattered across pit road. They are absolutely ecstatic. Their driver is delivered in a big way.
on the biggest, one of the biggest stages. The top premier level of stock car racing in the entire world. And in only his sixth start, Tim Foster has shocked the world. And what's more, he has guaranteed himself a, a spot in the all-star race. To the surprise of everyone in the garage area. We were wondering if a part-time driver was going to be able to even win a race. Well, there you have it. And it's not who we thought. Um, there we go. <coughs> Point lead grows to 16. From 10, it grows to 16 points. Not a huge amount. Ann Wilson's gonna not have a good day. But you know who's gonna really benefit? Actually... I could be completely wrong. Tom Hanks could be... He's sixth. Did Tom Hanks just steal the points lead? 121. I'm not... I don't think it's going to be enough, but it's... No, I don't think it's going to be enough. It's not going to be enough, but Tom Hanks has just put himself back into the conversation. Oh, that missed race at Charlotte looms large humongous it's a three horse race for the championship now Al Capone has probably bought himself some points not the word I was looking for Yeti Lee just put himself up into a race. And Tim Foster, your winner. Next time out is going to be, I believe, the Pet Rock 400. It's going to be... Mm, no, that was... No, it's North Wilkes. What is North Wilkes? Does anybody have any clue what the North Wilkesboro Speedway is? Okay, I should have figured. Of course, it would be th the Midway. It'd be the Midway 400, of course. Presented by Tyson. Because, of course, Tim Foster, your winner somehow, ladies and gentlemen. What a way to do it. Congratulations. The big winner, as we still have drivers finishing the race. Harrison Ford doing the cool-down lap of shame. So many battered race cars. We'll see you next time. As more sh cars get battered at North Wilkes. We'll see you then.